Hello everyone, it's Jack's Girl, and um, it's my last day in Utah. So before we leave, I thought I'd make a video and just show you a few things. You can see over there, I already put the day bed in my room on my iPad. So I just kind of covered the bed just lightly with the um, old quilt and then those pillows on top have um, some tatting that one of my female relatives did. Um, I think it was either my great aunt or my great grandmother. So one of them did those. So they're on my bed there and I accidentally tore one of the little lace and um, I'll have to fix it. It's so small, like you would never notice, but it just barely broke the thread. So I think I can fix it. I'm gonna try to anyway. As you can see, my closet is starting to get full. <laughs> that's good, right? Because I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's good or not. So we drove out to Utah um, this weekend and the back end of the truck was filled with boxes and most of it crafting. But I don't want my boxes to get too heavy and my husband likes the boxes to not be too high above the truck bed. So it's a big truck uh, and they're all plastic bin type boxes so we can just like keep reusing and reloading them up. And yeah, anyway, so and I now have, I think, three sewing machines here and I think I have maybe two more at home <laughs> that need to come and I don't sew. Um, someday I hope to and I, I'm hoping that as we come out here, I'll be able to use a lot of this time to craft. Although I didn't get a lot of crafting time this time because we had visitors and then taking care of the dog because the dog just went absolutely ballistic having all these people in the house. And so it was extra work with her and I didn't get any homework done, not one bit of homework because I was unpacking my boxes and putting things away. And as I was coming, um, as I'm going through some of my boxes, um, sorry, my leg itches that too much information maybe <laughs> well, I was coming through some of my boxes and one of the nice things about having like this extended time to move um, we have three years to move everything from here to there um, I'm able to go through all my stuff you know and actually touch everything and then decide what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep so I'm not a hoarder. There are people that are hoarders and they have illnesses and I'm not that person. I don't have that illness. I do have a lot of stuff. I don't like to part with any of my things, especially when I've had them for X amount of years. I um, attach memories to them. Um, maybe not as strong as some people do, but I do hang on to things and I think it's because I've held on to them for so long that it's kind of like well I've held on to it for this long how kind of how do I get rid of it um so I'm kind of torn between that and like think have you seen the movie Toy Story that's like that movie's old right it's really cute it's a little Disney Pixar movie if you haven't seen it that's about a little it's about a little boy with his toys and he's playing with them and whatnot Okay, so there's three series to that movie. And one of the last ones that was made, Toy Story 3, is the one that I'm thinking of. And so there's Andy, he's all grown up. He's going away to college and he has all these toys in his room and his room is still little kid type stuff and he's leaving and for whatever reason, his mom's like, all this has to go. <laughs> like. I guess he doesn't get to come back, which I think is kind of crappy um, because you never see a dad in the movie and um, it's the mom and the, his little sister. And anyway, so I'm thinking, why is she kicking him out? You know, I don't know. And it doesn't say that she's going to redecorate or whatever, but it, so to me, it's just kind of sad, but I, it has to tie in for the movie. Anyhow, so the toys... Um, they've been sitting in a toy box for so long and they just want to play with Andy and they don't realize that, you know, once you grow up, you're not being 
uh, the kid that you were once and playing with the toys. But they're just sitting in this box waiting, hoping, you know, and sometimes they'll open the box and it shows you, you know, they use the cell phone, they call him and he's like, well, that's weird. You know, who called me? And he blames his little sister and it's the toys. They want to talk to him and they're like, wow, he actually touched me. Ooh, you know, they're excited. So his mom says, you have to do something about all this stuff. Um, in your room, you know, there's a donation box, there's a trash bag, um, or you put stuff in the attic. What do you want to do? So he's looking through the toys and he decides to keep some and then the rest of them, like some he has for donation and, and then there's a big heap of them he's going to put up in the attic. And I think he's going to take only like the main toy, like the main character toy, which is Woody. Um, and so the toys don't realize that. They think that well, no, they know they're going to the attic, sorry. And they're talking about it and they're like, well, wow, I hope I'd be donated. I think that's what they said. You know, some of them are like, I hope I get to be donated. I do play with kids again. And some of them are like, no, we're Andy's toys and we need to be there for him in case he needs us. You know, maybe he'll have children or something, but we just need to be there for him. And some are like, no, 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 we just, we want to be played with. Long story short, you guys have to see the movie to see how it all turns out. It's really cute. Anyway, so where I'm getting with this is I'll look at my things and I'm like, oh, but I, you know, if my toy, if my items are talking to me, we need to be there for her if she needs us or wants us or if she just wants us in storage, we'll just be there. And some of the things are like, can I go someplace else and be appreciated? Please, please. <laughs> no, I really don't do that. I'm just kidding. But, um, I do think about when I now I'm looking at my stuff like why do I still have this um, is it useful why am I hanging on to it and I just look at it as these are all my things I have a bigger house I have more storage I can keep all the things however is it right to do that um, there's some organizational cleaning people out there and I hope I don't Say her name wrong I think it's um, Marie Kahn and she has a book and I, she's from maybe Japan and her books are Kahn Marie and I think it's because they put the last name before they put the first anyways she has these videos and such on how to clean your house and how to organize and get rid of clutter and there's this like a whole big system of how you do it but basically it comes down to does this spark joy and if it's not something that sparks joy, why am I hanging on to it? Because there are millions of other things out there. You know, more than likely, you're going to go shopping and you're going to purchase something else. I mean, we as crafters, you know, are constantly, I was going to grab a bunch of stuff, but I really don't have a bunch of stuff here. You know, we go, we go to the store and, you know, like, we pick up because it's on sale. And how many of us have, like, a lot of fabric that's sitting in there and like, oh, yeah, it's on sale, it's perfect, and I'm going to use it, and then... You know, time goes on and we know it's there and then we see another sale or we see another piece of fabric or something that's like, oh. so it's not like the world is going to stop tomorrow and meaning like there'll never be a production of fabrics or patterns or anything again. So if going through my stuff, I find something that I'm not going to keep, I'm going to give it away. Yeah, I'm going to. So I'm not just applying this to my stitching stuff because that's you know, I'm just, you know, you know, that's not really going to happen. Although I do have some stitching stuff that's going to be traveling abroad, um, maybe in a month or so, um, as I'm gathering some things. I don't know, it might be sooner because I have a few things and to keep the cost down, if it's a little bit lighter, it's going to be better, right? So, um, yeah. Anyways, so, okay. Where, where am I going with this? Sorry, guys. This should have been at the end of my video because it's supposed to be a stitching video, but surprise it's not <laughs> so really fast let me show you what I came across this is what got me to doing this video so usually I try to show you the old things at the very end but here's my old thing at the beginning because why not so it's an old book and it's the story of Peter Rabbit da -da -da. it's an action guide book so I've had this book since I was a little girl and I'm looking at it going, wow, this book is pretty tattered looking. It's probably pretty old. I um, did some research online. I don't even know like how long ago. But I'm gonna show you guys the book before I give you the information on it. And maybe you could be thinking, try to guess like if 
if you're into this old stuff, like what decade it came from, okay? Maybe some of you guys know this book. So mine's pretty tattered. It was probably loved very much by my brother and myself. So there's, you know, there's a story here and then these little guys, and I think they used to move in. If I remember right, there might have been a tab here to move these guys for the mom and for the sisters and such. I'm not sure, but being that this is torn, I kind of think that maybe there was something here. Hmm, smells like my old photos, my old scrapbook. So then this one, when you move it, there's like a film to protect it, I guess. So when you move the page, it's supposed to move. But anyway, there's this guy, the bird who needs to. Now, this one you might be able to see better. See? Oops. I think this guy was supposed to be like a little farmer. But yeah, they don't like this one. This page is kind of falling apart. And I'm trying to see if I can show you guys how these things move, just in case you guys had one of these and you're like, oh yeah, I remember. I remember that. Some of you might, but might be looking going, what the hell, why did you keep that for that long? So the plastic film, whoops, is missing from this one. Um, he, he was shaking his head and his little sister would come across the room. Yeah, so anyhow, and there may have been another one right here. Maybe it was mom. So yeah, I, I still have this book. Sorry, I'm smelling it. <laughs> That weird you know we kind of had that old you know scent from back in the day anyways this was um, illustrated by June gold brow so I looked it up because this book did not have a date anywhere on it so it's just the 1972 according to the de Grummond children's literature collection at the University of Southern Mississippi so I don't know it might have um, it it might have there might be more information on it now I don't know um, it looks like it was three dollars maybe one time it was I can only imagine it was brand new when we got it because my brother was born in 72 so it might have been an Easter gift or one of a gift for him we're making these little guys move Let's see. And I was thinking about hanging on to it. I've had it all these years, but then I had looked at it more, and although it's a fond memory, I don't think I'm going to hang on to it. I think it's going to go. So I'm going to collect this, put this little information in here. Somebody else might like it. They might collect this kind of stuff. They might say, hey, that was part of my childhood memory, and I want some of that. Scrapbookers might want to use this and I almost thought about it because I'm a scrapbooker. So I thought about maybe taking some of these out and I thought, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to. So yeah, it's gonna go fairly well. So maybe somebody will want it and maybe somebody won't, might end up in like, gosh, maybe it might end up in a bin, who knows. Okay, so let's get to the scrapping stuff. I've been chit-chatting for you guys, at you guys for 15 minutes nearly and haven't showed you any scrappy stuff. And I really don't have that much to share with you. But we'll make something up here. We'll make it work. Um, first thing I came, when I came back here, I was looking through my magazines of the day because I was putting some mine away, the ones that I showed you in the flip through. And I came across this old cross stitcher. Actually, I don't think it's old. March 2016. And this one came with a freebie. So I'm going to do it. And it's the Mother's Day, Mother's Day charm kit. So there's a little charm Ooh, right there. Sorry, my makeup smudged on my finger as I wiped my eye. Um, so there's a little charm right there. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that up for my mom. And what I love about 
these uh, UK patterns is that I've noticed that most, if not all, tell you how long it's going to take to stitch it. I love that. Um, it should take four hours. So in Jock's Girl time, probably about 17 days, <laughs> morning to night. I'm a slow stitcher. Yeah, um, I bought this one because of this little pattern. Let me show you, what's this one? That one right there, I love that. And when I bought this, was it three years ago? My daughter was young enough, she probably would have really enjoyed that on something. Now, I don't know, she probably still would, but there's a whole collection of like little stuffed toys. It's cute. And I hope that if somebody stitches up, they would let the baby play with them and gnaw them or whatever. You know, like, why not? There's a lot of cute stuff in this book. And if you want to see a flip through, I can do a flip through at another time. So I'm going to have to take this back home with me because the pattern itself is in the, is in the magazine. And I wish I would have got the next one, the next episode, the next magazine because there's this cute little brooch that was for free. I would have enjoyed that. That's a nice thing about these um, UK ones is they give you something free in it. Oh, oh yeah, this says that it has a, um, a needle included. Um, I hope it's a good one. I had a needle that I was using for that little lamb and I lost it. I don't know what I did with it and I liked it and it came with, I think it came with the kit. And I really liked it because it had a sharper end. And I don't have time to go to an LNS and look for needles. I'm kind of lazy like that. So I think it probably got vacuumed up because my, hu my husband came into my craft room and vacuumed for me. And then I was looking for it and can't find it. So I, I think it got vacuumed up and into the trash. So, oh, we have one of those vacuums that you plug into the, the wall and it's a central vac which is really nice. So my husband's like, I don't know how well it works. So he went and bought a new Dyson. So now we have two Dysons, one in California and one here. But I have to tell you, those Dysons work. So if you are um, considering buying a new vacuum cleaner and you can you know, afford it, because I'm not trying to sound like, oh, I've got all the money in the world, because I don't. But um, it's well worth the money. I don't know how much they are. I know they're expensive. I didn't buy it. I didn't buy the first one either. <laughs> <laughs> so we bought the animal one. Um, they're well worth their money. So if that's something that you're considering purchasing, I recommend it. Hopefully it would work for you as well as it worked for me. Back to the stitching stuff. Okay, so another thrift store haul. Uh, do I like that word, haul? Anyways, I went shopping a couple of weeks ago at the thrift store, so a totally different one. This one I hardly got anything. <clears throat> Maybe I did show it to you. Because somebody said, I think they said it was a cute lavender lace. So I'll start with that one. I don't know. Did I show this to you guys already? <coughs> Excuse me. This is a cutie. One dollar. I don't know if I will do it. I think it's cute. Um, I don't know where I would hang it. And the thing is, when I cross-stitch... I kind of want a purpose. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with it afterwards? Um, this just isn't like my daughter's cup of tea. My mom might like it. So maybe if I stitched it, I would stitch it for her. But um, I don't know. So this one, if you know, I'll think about it, I may or may not do it. And if I don't do it, somebody might be getting that one. I don't know if I did show these to you guys. If I did, I'm so sorry. Just look at it as a replay. So for one dollar each, I picked up some Weeks Dye Works. This is Angel Hair. I paid a dollar for it. And this one here is Light Khaki, and it's variegated. And you can see the variegation in that one. Is this one variegated too? Kind of looks, yeah, it looks like it is. 
looks like it's variegated slightly and then Bruce spruce it's a nice variegation that one and then this is juniper so slightly darker some variegation in that one Those were a dollar each. So I purchased all four. I also, oh, I think I did show you guys these, right? Like this is Aqua. These ones are stapled in there. Um, it doesn't say, it just looks like white. You guys see that? Sorry. Here's this one, Marigold. And I paid, unbelievable, 25 cents for this whole pack. Crazy. I don't know who does the, um, what is this one? I can't remember, I can't see it. Hold on, I'm getting old. Oh, Navy. And this one, this one is cactus. So yeah, I paid 25 cents for that, a whole quarter for all those, all those little bits. And there might, you know, I don't know how much stitching I can really get done with that, but I think that I could put it on something, you know, even if I have, if, it, if the fabric or the pattern called for a couple of flowers, you know, all in purple and I only had a few in a different, you know, as long as it looks good, I guess. And then this one here is called Needle Necessities for $1.75. I don't know, has any of you used Needle Necessities? I never have. So here's this and this one. So it's over dyed floss. Let's see. Needle Necessities, that's all it says. And then 1781, like a fabric, like a factory stamped. So there's that. Pretty, huh? I think they're the same. I think they're the same. The one thing I know I didn't show you guys, and I, I forgot, and this was from a large, um, when I went shopping a couple of months ago and I purchased a lot of stuff, I think there's a lot of fabric and things like that in one of my other videos, I picked this up and I forgot to show it to you guys. So here's this. This is quite interesting. I don't know what I would do with this because it's cut so short here. But you could stitch here and definitely in the center. So that's interesting. Um, there's like a rose pattern. Ooh. Were you guys able to see? Whoops, 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 whoops. I'm sorry. Dude. Hold on. Hold on. Don't anybody move. <laughs> Let me fix everybody. Okay. Better? I don't know. Where is this? Okay. So there's that pattern around there. So I don't know. When I was showing you this, I don't. I couldn't see past it. So I'll make sure you guys can see. Yeah. So there's a center there you can stitch on. This one cost 50 cents, both of them. I got two of them for 50 cents. And this says the material is damask. It was originally 275 at Neil Craft Place. Um, I don't know what, what you would do with it. Now I'm gonna show you guys something else. Um, it looks pretty even. I just, you would have to definitely do something to the ends. Like, can you guys see all this stuff? You would definitely have to do something to the edges that so maybe on a pillow cushion something or on a table runner and somehow stitch it down or I think I'm gonna share one because I have two and they're both different so I'll show you the other one this one here I think is what's called ivory and I don't mind sharing these kind of things because you know I only have so much time to stitch, unfortunately, and it's not usually a lot of time. I 
and this one was 260. And this is damask. And it's a 14 count. Okay, so this one here is like a white. But it says beige, but it looks white to me. Um, so this one here just has stitching in the center. I have never seen anything like this, but I also don't get out very much. <laughs> so, and again, I guess you would just put this on, um, like a pillow or a cushion or whatever you want to call it. And there's the pattern to that one. I think I kind of like the roses better, but there's more stitching to be done on it. So, I think if I give one away, it's going to be that pretty, this one, this pretty ivory one, because there's more stitching that needs to be done, maybe. I guess you don't have to, but stitch some leaves or little flowers or some pansies on it. <laughs> or a chicken. <laughs> I don't know if a chicken will go on that. I don't know. Maybe to somebody it would. All right, I think that's that's all I have. That's all I have to show with you guys. Um, I still finished my Christmas ornaments. I wanted to. I brought the, the um, felt out here and I brought some ribbon out here to do it because I thought I would. I guess I'm going to have to do it next time because I still have some things to do. I don't know what time it is right now, but I'm sure my husband's going to want to be leaving soon because it's a six hour drive. I hate to leave this place. It's wonderful. It really is. Um, and I have to go wash my dog and then do a last load of laundry because we do loop clothes here and things. I don't want to go. I keep threatening my husband, like, I'm going to get a job here and then stay here. But I couldn't live without him. There's just no way. <laughs> and then sometimes I, like last night, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to get a job here and just work, like, just work every other weekend or something, I don't know. I can't do that either. I told them maybe just like figure out how we could just work, come out here and just for me to work, but then that wouldn't be fun for me. Yeah, I'm just always trying to come up with things just to keep us out here. Yeah. My husband works a lot of extra overtime um, because he's getting ready for retirement, so he's building all that up and he just figures, you know, well, the money is good and ready to be had might as well get some right oh, crazy man um, so I'm looking forward to his retirement because I love him he's a good guy all right you guys I'm sure you've heard enough it, this is kind of like been just like a chat with jock squirrel instead of a stitching time but um, it is what it is thanks for checking in on me you guys um, Denise and Debbie and um, Jamie and Calgo Kate. Hello, 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 hello. And farewell. All right. Oh, and I also saw that I have some new people and I'm checking out their videos. I hope the rest of you who don't have videos yet, hopefully this year you guys will um, put a video or two up. You don't even have to be on the video. You can just, you know, like I do sometimes, hide behind the camera. It's all good. It doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. It doesn't matter if you're, um, fluent in a different language and um, I do watch some of the Russian videos I don't understand a word they say <laughs> not one <laughs> but um, they have that you should guys go check out some of those Russian gals oh my goodness okay let me tell you those girls on Instagram the Russian girls holy moly their stitching is phenomenal I think that's their main job is just stitching and they stitch some really beautiful things so go check them out let me know if you do or um, I can't even pronounce their names I can't pronounce any of it I will leave comments like just really easy comment in English I know you can hit translation to see what it says um, but I just try to make it easy for them and I think probably most of them like most of people around the world all speak English you know they're bilingual and here us little Americans, you know, we're just trudging along with our English. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not hating on anybody. I'm just saying. 
Um, so go check out some of those gals and their stitching is amazing. Um, and yeah, share with me. Let me know if you guys did. Anyways, take care, everybody. Thanks for, you know, hitting that thumbs up button. And uh, thanks for the comments and thanks for subscriptions. Oh, and just letting you guys know, I know some of you guys have made comments and I see it come through in my email and I try to go back and reply and I can't always get them off of um, YouTube from my phone. I think I need to, when I get home or get on my computer, do it. I think that's the only way. I don't know. I mean, because I'll see that there's like two or three messages and then I can only see one. And usually it's Jane's. And Jane is usually the first person to um, reply, which is awesome. All right, you guys, take care. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see. And uh, the next time I see you guys, I'll try to show you guys something old again. Besides my face and these old hands. <laughs> my ring is old. It's really old. It's almost 100 years old, my ring. That's this one. Yeah. This one we had made. So, okay, really quick. This wasn't the end of my video. Um, we were in an antique store, and I was just telling my husband, like, you know, if you ever want to propose to me, any of these rings will do. This one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. And I walked away. And I was, like, just kind of, like, being funny. And he went back the next day and bought the this one that I, he thought I pointed out, which I did. But yeah. so anyways, this one here, it was from the 1920s. And they were telling me that back in that time, the ladies didn't wear two. They just would wear one. But um, I wanted another one to go around there. And then I told my husband for my fifth year wedding anniversary, I think I want another one to go around there. Because I want all the things. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little bit of green every now and then. All right, you guys, take care. Bye.